Our daily lives could be impacted by this long queue in Panama Canal. It is a crucial route for global trade. This canal is about 80 kilometers long and links the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. It's been around for 100 years and around 14,000 ships use it every year, accounting for 6% of the world's trade. It plays a vital role in getting goods to stores all over the world. But now, it's facing problems like technical issues, lack of space, and climate challenges. So, why is this incredible engineering achievement in trouble? To find out, we're going to take a trip to France, but not in the present day. We're going back to the late 1800s to meet a famous Frenchman known as the Great Frenchman. In 1880, a diplomat named Ferdinand de Lesseps started the Universal Company of the Panama Interoceanic Canal. He had a grand idea to connect the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans by digging an 80-kilometer pathway through the land in southern Panama between the Caribbean Sea and Panama Bay. Ferdinand was a confident man, but he had a big reputation to live up to. He had previously been a major figure in the success of the Suez Canal, which had opened just 10 years earlier. Building on his achievements in Suez, he aimed to do something similar in Panama. In 1882, he purchased the rights to the land, which were still controlled by the United States of Colombia. Work began on the canal, but they encountered significant problems. The terrain was quite different from what Ferdinand had experienced in Suez. They had to deal with dense jungles and a hill nearly 100 meters above sea level. The workers also faced extremely challenging weather conditions, including tropical storms, mudslides, and diseases like malaria and yellow fever. This took a heavy toll on the workers, and the project nearly went bankrupt. To salvage the project, they had to change their plans. Many parties involved in the project, including Gustave Eiffel, the future designer of the iconic Eiffel Tower in Paris, wanted to build a canal with locks. However, it was too late to make such a change, and the project was entangled in one of the biggest financial scandals of the century in France. The project had received funding from tens of thousands of small investors through a large-scale public subscription. Unfortunately, much of this money was used for bribery rather than financing the increasingly challenging canal project. In 1889, Ferdinand de Lesseps' company went bankrupt. This adventure not only cost many investors their money, but also resulted in the loss of over 20,000 workers' lives. Despite its troubled history, the Panama Canal has always been a source of envy. This was true even back in the 16th century when Spanish conquistadors first laid eyes on it. They realized that this less than 100 kilometer route would save them from going all the way around the dangerous Cape Horn in South America which would have been a long and costly journey. The story of the canal is closely intertwined with the history of Panama. In 1903, with the support of the United States, Panama declared its independence. In return, the United States gained a perpetual concession for the canal and a 16-kilometer wide strip of land cutting through the entire country. Construction work resumed in 1904. Engineers opted for a lock canal design and the introduction of vaccines helped control the spread of tropical diseases. This massive project took 10 years and involved a complex system of steam engines and innovative railway engineering, especially for clearing the millions of tons of rock from the canals. At its peak, nearly 40,000 workers were employed. The project cost the United States around $375 million, making it the most expensive venture in the country at the time. The canal stretched 79.6 kilometers long, featuring two artificial lakes and three massive locks, each 33 meters wide. This engineering marvel allowed ships to cross the American continent, but it came at a great human cost, with another 5,000 workers losing their lives during its construction. The Panama Canal officially opened on April 15, 1914, just as Europe was entering World War I. The United States had complete control over this vital maritime route and determined the size of the locks, which were 320 meters long and 33 meters wide, setting the standard for the new larger ships known as Panamax. It wasn't until the 1970s that a process began to hand over control of the canal and the American enclave to Panama. In 1999, Panama regained ownership of its namesake, the Panama Canal. Today, the canal is a vital source of income for the country, contributing to 10% of its revenue. However, using this unique passage comes at a cost, 
with fees based on the size of the vessels. According to the Canal Control Authority, these fees range from $10,000 for small boats to a whopping $300,000 for the large Neo Panamax container ships, which are enormous, measuring 3.65 meters long and capable of carrying almost 12,000 containers. Prices can even rise during peak periods when certain slots are auctioned by the port administrators. For instance, a chemical tanker recently paid $2.4 million to get a priority pass. This financial gain is at risk, as the canal's current model faces challenges. The canal relies on a system that dates back to its construction. Instead of clearing all the land, engineers leveled the terrain and created two artificial lakes, Lake Gatun and Lake Alawela, formerly known as Lake Madden. These lakes are filled by inland rivers, and a system of locks raises and lowers the boats as they traverse the canal. This system involves locomotives on the canal's banks to guide the boats between locks. However, this system comes at a cost, as each boat passage results in the loss of 200 to 250 million liters of fresh water into the ocean. This water loss isn't a problem during periods of good rainfall, but global warming has changed the equation. Droughts are becoming more frequent, and the region has faced dry spells in 2016, 2019, and again starting in May during what should be the rainy season. The situation has been exacerbated by the El Nino weather phenomenon. Water levels in rivers and lakes have dropped so low that authorities have taken precautions, reducing the tonnage of boats to prevent them from sinking. The number of container ships passing through the canal each day has also been reduced from 40 to 32, leading to longer queues at the canal gates. Unlike the Suez Canal, which operates differently, the Panama Canal uses a lock system with the help of tugs and specially trained operators to manage this challenging task. With high demand but limited capacity, the waiting times have become much longer. In early September, the newspaper Le Monde reported a significant increase in waiting times for boats at the Panama Canal. These times went from the usual four days to nearly 20 days in mid-August. This isn't the first time Panama's queues have made headlines. Back in 2006, the canal faced similar challenges. It had become too old and too small to handle the new, larger container ships. To address this issue, Panama initiated a $6 billion expansion of the canal in 2016 which included opening new locks that could accommodate 95% of the world's ships. The depth of Lake Gatun was increased by 45 centimeters to allow more boats to pass through daily. However, this massive project didn't resolve the water shortage problem, especially during periods of drought. As a response to the current situation, Panama has imposed restrictions on passage for the upcoming year. And if there's not enough rain until November, which marks the end of the rainy season, the problem could persist. This has significant implications as ship owners may opt for alternative trade routes, like the Arctic route, which becomes more feasible during the summer months due to rising global temperatures and accelerated ice melt. The drying up of the canal also affects the people of Panama, as the two artificial lakes serve as a source of drinking water for the capital, Panama City, and its suburbs, catering to over two million people, nearly half the population of the country. To address the issue of water supply for the canal, authorities are considering the creation of a new water reservoir to the west of the canal, sourced from the Indio River. This reservoir would provide water to Lake Gatun through an 8-kilometer underground tunnel. However, these developments will require time, depending on the level of rainfall, ranging from three months in the best-case scenario to almost 2.5 years if drought continues. Another potential project involves extracting water from Lake Bayano and releasing it into the sea passage. These plans are still in the early stages and require consolidation, approval, and financing before they can become a reality. In the latest press release at the time of this video's release, the company managing the canal reported some improvement in boat waiting times compared to a month or two earlier. However, Lake Gatun's water level remains significantly below seasonal norms underscoring that the issue is far from resolved. And that concludes this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to our channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon on Science Fellow.
Goodbye.